Greetings, Health Scholars, and welcome back to the For Health Scholars channel. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. My name is Dr. Robusa. It is so good to have you here on this channel. I show current and aspiring healthcare professionals how to, one, quickly and successfully earn their degrees, and two, how to start, build, and ensure profitable careers within the business side of the healthcare industry. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your post notifications. I promise you don't want to miss out. Now, today's conversation, we're going to talk about five unconventional job opportunities slash organizations that you can apply to and work for to gain healthcare work experience. Now, the job opportunities that I'm going to talk about today are considered low barrier entry opportunities, but if you utilize them correctly, it can really take you far in your healthcare career. And the reason why I came up with the topic for today because over the last couple of weeks, I've been getting comments from scholars who are feeling a bit discouraged. They are potentially recent graduates from a healthcare management administration, public health, health services, IT program, you name it, just long as it's on the, the business side of the healthcare industry, and they haven't had much success with gaining employment. Trust me, I've been there before, but I'm here to tell you that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And so today I want to share a few resources that can really give you practical tips for application so that you can transform from being unemployed to hired. But before I jump into today's conversation, here's a few words from our sponsor. Do note that today's episode is sponsored by my course, which is titled From Healthcare Graduate to Hired. I'm so proud of this course, and I know that this is the course that you need if you are an active job seeker wanting to acquire a job in the healthcare space, particularly a non clinical healthcare job. In this course, I walk you through my five step strategy on how to go from active job seeker to hired, as well as I talk about things that people are not necessarily sharing with you on how to acquire a job in a digital era because right now we are in a digital era and many people when you're looking for jobs you're looking for these healthcare jobs online so how do you navigate that process so that it is successful in helping you getting hired also in the course you get a chance to work with me and the other students in the course I review your resume other job hunting documents we work together on creating your personalized job hunting plan because once again the ultimate goal is to get hired so definitely check out the course, you can sign up by accessing the link in the description box. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side. All right. So we are back. And as I stated, we're going to talk about five unconventional or uncommon job opportunities slash organizations that you can work for in order to acquire quick healthcare work experience. Now, let me just give you a moment of transparency, because as I told you, I have been in your shoes and I'm, I'm a firm believer in not really sharing anything that I have not gone through or helped other people go through, especially as it relates to their career in healthcare. And so when I was in between healthcare jobs, this particular organization was a lifesaver. And when I tell you it was a lifesaver, I truly meant it was a lifesaver. This organization helped me keep food on my table and helped me keep some of, if not all of my bills paid. And that organization was AmeriCorps. Now, if you're not familiar with AmeriCorps or if you've never heard about them, let's talk about what they are all about in great detail. Now, AmeriCorps is really dedicated to helping not-for-profit organizations, faith-based organizations, community organizations, as well as public agencies be able to create and expand programs that ultimately bring resources and services to underserved communities and individuals and really are geared to helping them get out of poverty. And so as I stated, this is a federal organization. And so if you become an AmeriCorps member, you are technically doing a service similar to what you see in the military. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, how does this relate to healthcare professionals? Well, under the AmeriCorps umbrella, especially with VISTA, they do partner with either non-for-profit or public agencies or community-based healthcare organizations. And so for you as a healthcare professional, should you find an opportunity under the AmeriCorps directory or database and you apply to it and they accept you, you have the opportunity to enter the healthcare workforce through this route. 
So this is why I shared it is an unconventional or upcoming way, but it's a great way to gain your healthcare work experience, as well as it's a great way to make an impact. I will tell you that when I was doing my service with AmeriCorps, it was truly rewarding because I knew that the program that I was putting together and supporting was able to help individuals who may not have had access to the services that this organization was providing until an individual like myself and other service members have come to just share our knowledge, our expertise. And so in my service, I worked with an organization that was rooted in healthcare, and they were trying to transform their reproductive um, meetups that they have where they're sharing all of this information about reproductive care to teens and transferring that or transforming that experience from being only in person to also being online. And since I had experience with developing courses before, since I had experience with even teaching online, that this was just the right opportunity. So it's not just about, okay, it saved me, of course, by keeping um, my, if not all of my bills paid, but it was a great opportunity for me to learn new skills, to be mentor and to be a mentor to others. Now, here are some of the additional benefits that AmeriCorps offered, which once again, it served as a lifesaver to me is that one, of course, I had gained work, more work experience. And do note that when you finish your AmeriCorps service, you can put that on your resume. And similar to the military, if you are known to be an AmeriCorps um, recipient, they tend to put your application on a preferential status. Many organizations will indicate, so many public health agencies like the CDC, HSS, um, who um, value federal service and federal workers and governmental agencies that value federal workers, you fall under that category. And so if you put AmeriCorp on your resume, that will help you gain some of the work experience that they look for as a, a a potential governmental or federal workers. So that's good news. In addition, you get paid a livable wage. Now, the livable wage is not for you to ball out. The livable wage is not going to help you get rich. But what the livable wage does is help you put food on your table. It helps you cover small expenses so that you are able to complete your service. And that was something that in between healthcare jobs, I was in great need of. And so it had a mutually beneficial relationship. I was gaining new skills, but I was also sharing my skills with this organization to help them transform their in-person program to also an online program and write in their curriculum. So you do do work. And it's not something that you just randomly get in AmeriCorps. You have a database, so you, you go into the database, you create a profile, and then you start to look for available vacancies in that database. Once you find a database, and they're located throughout the 50 states, and so once you find that database and you submit a... Uh, inquiry or uh, intention form rather that you are interested in working for this organization. They will ask for your resume. They will review it. And should you be a good fit, their team will now call you in for an interview. So it's similar to a job opportunity. I don't want to give the wrong impression that, oh, once you sign up, you're going to get something. No, you still have to go through a application process, but it is a lower entry compared to going to a hospital website, trying to apply to a job, trying to um, beat the applicant tracking systems, aka the ATS. And uh, many of these jobs are asking for work experience more and more now. And so this is a great way to gain work experience and not have the need to have former experience in the role that you potentially can work in as an AmeriCorps service member. So keep that in mind. But this is definitely a great opportunity. And how I personally found out about AmeriCorp is through networking. So I do not talk about anything that I have not done or once again, help other people come through. And this was through the power of just speaking up. I did not want to suffer in silence and I knew that I had to do something. And so through having a conversation with a good friend of mine who also were friends, not just personally, but professionally as well. She told me about AmeriCorps. She told me about its benefits. And she told me that was something that she had to do when she was in hard times. So I'm just here to tell you that um, you're not the only person who has or are potentially going through hard times. Um, I hate that people are going through hard times, but sometimes it comes with the economy. It comes with many things, but it doesn't mean that you have to suffer in silence. And I hope, like I said at the end of the video, that I really encourage you and give you practice tips for applications so that you can get to the money, but also gain that work experience and in the process, 
create an impact that helps communities all around the U.S. under the AmeriCorp umbrella. So in addition to AmeriCorp, there are other organizations that are similar that you can use as a great start or a way to help you in your gap year or even to advance your career. So I want to talk about those organizations as well. So the first one is Partners in Care. The second is Medical Reserve Corps, International Medical Corps, and Plan Parenthood. So let's get into it. So Partners in Care, they are an organization that are based in country here in the U.S., but also internationally. They have a headquarters here in the U.S., but they also have a headquarters in Canada. And Partners of Care, what they're all about, they're really focused on bringing high quality health care to underserved communities globally. They utilize both volunteers and paid workers to be able to provide clinical care, community health education, and research in this designated field, especially in areas where resources are limited. And the thing about partners in health, you don't have to be only a clinical professional to volunteer with them or to acquire a job with them. You can also be an administrative professional. And by now, you know that any healthcare system that you want to run efficiently, it needs both clinical and administrative professionals. And so Partners in Health can help you with that. They are a non-for-profit organization and they offer international and national job opportunities. You can also serve as a volunteer. So should you be an individual where you're like, well, I'm not in need of money. You know, I really just want to volunteer. This is another great opportunity. But But you're like, I just want to work. This is a great organization because they offer paid jobs, both nationally and internationally. So if you're interested in international health, this may be a great opportunity for you to travel abroad and still build up your work experience. All right, let's talk about the next organization, which is Planned Parenthood. And they are really popular. They're based here in the US and they're across the different 50 states. And with Parent Parenthood, they're really dedicated to providing vital reproductive health care, education, and information to millions of people worldwide. They're, so their organization is based across the 50 states here in the U.S., but their services extend outside of the U.S. as well. They are a not-for-profit organization, and you can serve once again as a volunteer, or you can look for a job vacancy that they have on their website and get hired as an employee, so whether it's full-time or part-time. So this may be a route that you look into, especially if you are a healthcare professional interested in the administrative side, but also that very much dedicated to community health, women's health, reproductive health. This may be a great path for you. The next organization, Medical Reserve Corps, what are they all about? So the Medical Reserve Corps is a national network that has more than 300,000 volunteers who organize locally. So they do have different chapters according to state. And their mission is really dedicated to improving the health and safety of members in given communities. And so they really rely on volunteers, but they have paid job opportunities as well that they're recruiting for. You can serve as a volunteer, but You can also look for employment with them. Now, this organization is under hss.gov, which is the Health and Human Services Department, which is our federal health department here in the U.S. And it's also managed by ASPR, which is the Administrative Strategic Preparedness Response, that gov. And so these two organizations make it possible for medical reserve corps to be in existence. Okay, the next organization, which is International Medical Corps. Now, hence in the name, they are a global humanitarian organization that provides emergency medical relief, training, and healthcare services to individuals and communities in disaster-affected areas. So people who have, or countries that have gone through natural disasters like tornadoes, earthquakes, um, they make sure that they come and provide those relief efforts. And so they also depend on volunteers, but they do have international job opportunities opportunities. And so this is another great organization to explore. They are a non-for-profit organization. And I'm here to tell you, these are the ways that you can get your foot in the door and still use the skills that you've learned in school to make an impact. So don't feel like all is lost, but those who are thinking that there's no hope for them or you're feeling defeated, I'm here to tell you once again, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So those are all of the organizations that I had to talk about. So once again, as a recap, I talked about AmeriCorps, 
Partners in Care, Medical Reserve Corps, Planned Parenthood, International Medical Corps. And of course, there are many organizations out there. And so as I find them and become familiar with them, I will definitely share her on the channel. But until then, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any additional questions, you can feel free to drop it in the comment section. But once again, thank you for watching today's video and bye for now.